Welcome to the Healers Cafe, conversations on health and healing with Mano Belize, a retired and deregistered naturopathic physician with 30 plus years of experience. Here you will discover engaging and informative conversations between experienced healers, covering all aspects of healing, the personal journey, the journey of the practitioner, and the amazing possibilities for our own body and spirit. So welcome to the Healers Cafe. And today I have with me a very special guest. His name is Jonathan Damonte. And um, we were colleagues or met like 26 years ago with very much similar passions. Uh, homeopathy and Bowen therapy. And um, he actually comes from a a lineage, I would say, of homeopaths. Um, Now, it was your father, uh, he's born in in England and um, moved to Canada when he was 18. And his father, John DeMonte, was a homeopath and a respected teacher based in London, who taught some of the key people that you may have heard about, but I'll, I'll let you, um, Jonathan, speak on that. And uh, I just want to welcome you and really explore homeopathy and what it is and where it fits and um, and all that. So thank you for taking the time. Well, thanks, Mano. It's a nice introduction. And um, I want to correct you that you know, you actually introduced me to Bowen therapy. And, That's true. <laughs> uh, and um, I learned it very you know, reluctantly. I was probably the worst student ever, but um, it absolutely took over my practice for many, many years and was the gateway for most patients mm. to enter my practice. And interestingly, about being a Bowen therapist and a homeopath, you have the opportunity to serve up both modalities as they're very interrelated and oftentimes bowen is as you know so reliable at uh, removing obstacles to cure by simply relieving patterns and and tensions and pains and inflammatory Mm -hmm. processes with such ease that it enables you to then target into the case much more easily and I say that because that enabled me to be a better homeopath for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so thank you mm-hmm. for, for that gateway <laughs> to the path of my practice. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know we have a lot of Bowen therapy history, yeah. and, but more homeopathic, in fact, when we really look at our relationship, I think it's right. yeah. inter- interconnected with homeopathy. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, and I think, too, I, I, I think with, um, I mean, like you said, they're both gateways in, you know, because many of what we experience hides in our body. But it's like, I wanted to really talk about also, um, I, why I want to talk about homeopathy is, I, I really have to say this to everyone, but you have a course <laughs> that teaches it, which is sort of, you know, and I, I had to make a decision because you can, you know, there's only so many hours in the week, so many hours, uh, days, you know, um, that you can actually work. And I was passionate about having people become more, more sovereign, more taking charge of their health. And, and I've always thought to myself, oh, if only homeopathy could be simplified, you know, I would love to teach homeopathy. But Bowen was simple, <laughs> so profound, but simple. So I kind of, you know, ran that way. And I know you you did too. And, you know, when we reconnected to know that you've actually focused on a simplified, but without losing the depth of homeopathy, um, I thought, okay, this, I really, really want people to hear about this because, um, I mean, it's a pet passion of mine clearly <laughs> so anyway but um yeah so that I definitely want to talk about about your your course but let's um a lot of people don't know what homeopathy is so why don't we start with that <laughs> okay that's a big subject so I'll go I'll try and make it so you can start I'll, don't worry I'll interrupt <laughs> about the light um that's 
bouncing into this room. It's uh, coming through a window at a slant here in, I'm in San Miguel, Mexico, um, where I'm putting the final touches on the course and um, refining it a little bit further. It's ready to be viewed, but um, there's always work to do and a few mistakes to correct. But, um, you know, I learned homeopathy at a time when there was a big boom in the education of homeopathy and the exploration of new ideas and the development of new medicines. And so my course, I want to state is simplified, but not simple. It's just the course I wish I would have had that would have taken me the 15 years of struggling to being confident in prescribing to where I am now. And um, I have a lot of um, uh, acknowledgement, of not just my own. I mean, I've just put together other people's hard work and made a, a course that would work. It really is. And homeopathy is a system of medicine that is empirical and scientific in its approach and how it's um, affecting people's ability to heal is a remarkable story. Um, you know, even now, the improbability of a homeopathic remedy working for chronic disease or acute disease is just mind-blowing for most people who experience it for the first time. It's an extraordinary process that you can give a little sugar pill that's medicated with a substance that stimulates a reaction that's so powerful that the healing is absolutely obvious, absolutely clear. So I'm going to move forward so that the light's not weird. And, um, you know, what is a homeopathic remedy? It is a substance. It is a medicine. It is a, um, a tool that provokes the healing response. And why it does that is that um, in large doses, it can create the similar state of reaction the patient has, the state of reaction in all spheres. And so in one way, it's an inoculation, but given in a very minute dose. And what's interesting is that the person who would respond to that minute dose responds because they're ultra sensitive, super sensitive to that very substance because it's more of the same problem they already have. Mm -hmm. Is it like you're explaining it like it's it's almost part of the work is finding what is similar to the person, because if you gave one of those minute doses, but it has nothing to do with the symptoms, it's like taking a sugar pill and it just doesn't do anything. Right. Like, you know, because people have called, you know, say, oh, you know, my child drank, you know, took the whole bottle and what do I do? And it's like nothing. It's not their remedy. It's not going to impact them. Right. So you're what you're saying is it's it's very precise and scientific in the sense that it's really based on the symptom picture of that the person has. But this is a medicinal dose. Right. Just regarding the medicine itself, let's talk about what is a symptom. And yes. so for a homeopath, a symptom is actually something different than a disease. A disease is a label for the set of symptoms, the characteristic symptoms of an illness. Whereas for a homeopath, a symptom is the expression of the individual's effort to maintain their health. And therefore, it's the expression of their disease, not the disease they have. And so the homeopathic remedies that work are those that are given for the patient's express, expressed symptoms. And so a homeopath observes those symptoms mm -hmm. as opposed to observing the pathology and giving a medicine based on the pathology. Mm. And so it's a very different perspective. Let's give a, a concrete example of that. Let's say like, you know, people might say, oh, you've got the flu, right? So that's your diagnosis. But, you know, give a, like an example of the different symptom pictures that you might see. Well, you know, everyone has the flu. However, it's the... Um, 
the characteristics of the individual. So for, I'll give you a couple of examples of a recent flu, and I had it as well, so uh, I, I can speak from experience. So one patient came actually with a rib injury, and they had um, an acute pain from a fall, and it was causing a lot of symptoms. And on top of that, they had a flu. And on top of that, they also had a chronic disease of constant swallowing and clearing their throat since a broken collarbone. And um, the remedy that was given not only resolved the constant scraping of 27 years, but also the flu and also the rib injury. And so this, the remedy, if I said the name Spigelia, is not a common flu remedy. And yet it is a neuralgic remedy. It is um, a cough and scraping remedy. And um, it fit the picture of the patient. Uh, whereas the same flu, we had very similar red nose, blowing nose. We were at the same dinner party the other night. And um, my symptoms were entirely different. And my symptoms fit another remedy. My symptoms were, um, if I can remember them now, were just um, a dry, hacky cough, a flu that wouldn't progress, a fever that wouldn't develop. And I gave myself a different remedy entirely. So, um, and I recovered, you know, post haste. I'm still a little bit, you know, sore, dry throat and occasional cough, but that's mostly from mucus that's still wanting to dry up. But otherwise my energy is fine and I'm back to normal. But mm -hmm. same flu, absolutely for sure. hundred percent certain it's the same flu, two different remedies entirely. Mm -hmm. And her symptom picture with the other uh, accompanying symptoms mm -hmm. fit entirely a different remedy. And it's, um, it's actually, we're all talking about it as a miracle because for 27 years, Mm -hmm. she couldn't talk without clearing her throat and it was mm -hmm. annoying to everyone she was around mm -hmm. so it is miraculous and, and and it's kind of funny when you you know you talk about a case like that it just reminds me how you know sometimes it's in an acute that you find one more symptom picture that kind you go okay this this is it you know whereas you know sometimes the hardest thing to treat is a common cold because there's nothing strange, rare, or peculiar to it. It's just, it's there. Like a rib pain could be similar to another, you know, I'm mean, not, not saying that there aren't differences, but um, it's the, it's the whole picture that also, um, and the way the person lives at that makes it so, you know, so exciting and unique and easy in a sense to, to, you know, prescribe, it's right? Wonderful. I mean, you, know, you can go online and look for the flu remedies yeah. in homeopathy and you'll get a list, five, six good candidates. But how do you differentiate which one would be the best one? Mm. And why you take one, it works for a little bit and then the next dose, it doesn't work. This has always been the dilemma of homeopathy is that even homeopaths have tried to give the remedies specificity according to a disease. Well, there are some remedies that are very specific. You know, if you hurt your, your, if you bruise your leg, Arnica will work. If you bang your finger in the door, Hypericum will work. If you have seasonal allergies, maybe Allium Sepa would work, but um, not more than that. Very rudimentary um, first aid, but, and that can be miraculous. No question, we should all have that tool. But it's when you get into the individualization of their symptoms that you begin to understand that it's not as cut and dried as using the, the usual suspects of remedies. You do need, with every case, to find what's unique in the symptoms of the individual. Mm -hmm. And acute, like you say, are such a useful uh, time to mm -hmm. work with a homeopath because there will be that unusual expression that gets pronounced um, yeah. the unusual expression of symptoms that gets pronounced at that time and enables mm -hmm. you to find something that might work much more profoundly for mm -hmm. chronic problems as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also want to raise one of the issues you brought up. You said, I, I, 
because I think you were sick on Friday and today we're Monday. So it's not, you know, many days later, but, you know, you still say you have a little bit of things going on, but the idea with homeopathy, it's not a suppression of the expression of symptoms. It really helps move things along. It, it sort of unblocks the way I see it, like unblocks the person's, you know, inability to, to heal because now it's like, oh, you know, the body recognizes this and then wants to heal. And then we just observe it. And, you know, there's plenty of rules. I'm sure you cover in your course of when you repeat and all these things, but, but it really isn't suppression of symptoms, you know, cause that's sometimes people ask, well, you're just covering, you're just looking at the symptoms and you're taking them away. And that's not, yes, but not, not in the same mechanism. You know, there's, a, you know, other things at play here. Um, so what I, you're let, saying, I just want to really yeah, go, go. what you're saying is that um, homeopathy is a system of medicine that buoys, that lifts the, your own vital healing ability. And therefore, the full resolution is still at play rather than taking part of your symptom away so that you just manage to get through, but really healing. And uh, what a wonderful way to support an immune system mm -hmm. than to guide it um, rather than overload it with super nutrients and nutraceuticals and such. Mano Boligier here, and I want to thank you for taking actionable steps towards engaging your healing journey and helping others discover their path by watching, sharing, subscribing, and reviewing these podcasts. Every review and share helps spread the word, these different perspectives and choices and options for healing. And to thank you, I'd like to invite you to sign up to my free seven sequence email tips on health and healing for everyday life. You can go to healerscafe.com tips. Thanks so much. Which is fine, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be times when those are useful, but that isn't touching the essential healing element within us. Mm -hmm. Anaman called it the vital force. And it's right. a very good term even today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you you actually have a whole background in uh, orthomolecular you know, medicine and you were quite involved in that for many years you know for so it's interesting because that is very much um one way of approaching and of supporting but it it doesn't replace the vital force it doesn't wake up the body it may give it everything it needs which if it doesn't have what it needs okay you know it has to be looked at but it's like something enlivens us to to heal, you know, that, you know, and, and that's what I, I mean, I, I think that's the part I've enjoyed the most in watching the incredible ability of our bodies to, to actually heal, you know, it's quite something. Now, I wanted to address the other thing. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's energy medicine, therefore, um, it's not biological, it's past avocado's number, which is true. Uh, so it's, 21 to the whatever 10th degree or whatever it is or no 10 to the 21st degree um anyway but um but the point is so how is it do you have to believe in it for for it to work and that's one of the things saying well i'll never believe in it so it won't work for me what's your take on that or your experience with that well i think um neither belief nor um, understanding is necessary in order to respond to the effects of homeopathy. Babies, animals, plants, these are all being medicated by practitioners and home prescribers and seeing wonderful results. So in research, we now have, uh, through spectrometry, an analysis of parts per gazillion, I mean, literally mm -hmm. gazillion um, 
billion is too small a number mm. to be able to measure what are actually molecules of the original substance still found within the homeopathic remedy. Mm. What perhaps we don't understand is how the human body could be so sensitive to those parts per billion mm -hmm. molecules, and yet it's there. And what's most amazing is that a scientist, a doctor, 250 plus years ago, was able to empirically show that to be true. And when he wrote about homeopathy, he said, please just repeat my experiments. That's all I ask. And many homeopaths did. And homeopath, homeopathy has a long, long history of uh, validation. And it's now coming that we can, through modern science, empirically measure these dilutions. And soon we'll understand the pathways of reaction. Um, you know, how does someone have a peanut allergy to parts per billion of peanut? Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we react to that small an, a number? And yet we do. We see the effect. And it's the same with homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think it, when you bring in the history, too, it's like we, you know, it was doctors because that's what they were. You know, they practiced homeopathy. And it's really after the Flexner report that really started the whole sort of money-making control of pharmaceuticals, which we're now seeing big time play out, you know, in the last three years, you know, when something's driven not really for healing, but really for financial gain. It's, um, you know, are we going to call that medicine? <laughs> you know, call it pharmaceuticals if you want, but you know, I think this is why it's such the perfect timing for people to, to look at these, you know, older modalities that really helped people heal. And, you know, I think it was at the beginning with uh, malaria, right? You know, Hanuman was, um, it was with quinine, actually, right? That, that Peruvian bark, which was the, the plant, right? Where he measured when people develop fever, when they had the chill, when they had, like, precisely what time, the direction of the chill, um, you know, the thirst of the person or the lack of, or all of those things, right? It was so precise that there's not just one remedy, there were several remedies that were, again, like we talked about the flu, different manifestations, you know, different people having different impacts, you know, and I think we've come, you know, full circle, <laughs> you know, some people never stopped <laughs> and understood that, you know, healing is healing, but I think a lot of people now are going, whoa, what have we been doing with our bodies? Your thoughts on this? Sorry, I just <laughs> get carried yeah, away. Like yeah. I'm There's so excited about this. <laughs> that you made. I mean, interestingly, in uh, the origin origins of homeopathy, that Samuel Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy, wrote a treatise on discerning the medicinal effects of drugs, and um, he did this by taking the medicines. In fact, he had a a, a group that followed him um, that also did the same experiment of taking these drugs that were used in medicine for the most part and uh, eliciting from the side effects of taking it while you're healthy, what are the symptoms of those drugs? What are the side effects of those drugs? And that became a compendium of symptoms that we would use in which to match the diseased person who has those symptoms with a medicine that could produce those symptoms. Mm. Homeopathy meaning similar suffering. Mm -hmm. And so the substance that can produce the problem is used to treat the problems. And uh, we all know this phenomena by cutting red onions. Mm. Um, you know, if you've cut three onions, you're going to feel it in your eyes and nose. And what does that symptom feel like? Awful, burning, irritating, streaming, mucus, just wanting to get it out of your eyes. Well, that's very similar to uh, pollen allergies in the spring. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Allium sepa, red onion, is used that way. 
a very good example of homeopathy. So hmm. I've ram I've diverted your question. <laughs> um, right. I just wanted to bring it back to the em empirical part of homeopathy. Yeah. Yeah. And that I wanted to bring in another point, but I, I know I've missed one of your questions. So could you repeat it? Well, I don't think I can remember it exactly. It's fine. It was just, you know, there's so many aspects. And I, I do think we're going to need to do two interviews. And what I'd like to do mm. is um, when we post this one, that people who have questions about homeopathy, anything, um, you know, to post them so that we can actually address them directly. And maybe next time we do it literally live, we'll, we'll see if we can organize that. But, um, but you know, I think there's so many questions because there's, there's a lot of misunderstanding about it. And, you know, there's an unnecessary complication about it. In some ways, it, it, the principle is simple. And I think that's what you were you were kind of getting back to and talking about indirectly about the, the law of similars, like curing like. And that was actually Paracelsius, right? <laughs> A philosopher who came up with that. And then Hahnemann literally turned it into a, a, a practicing medicine. It's a phenomena of nature that is an observable fact. And if you can repeat this, with um, um, you know uh, all kinds of substances, you actually are creating this medicine system, you know, which is uh, yeah, you know. So I know there's a big study saying, oh, homeopathy is you know BS. It, it doesn't work, and I think it was in the Lancet um, they published it. But what did they do? They gave everyone the same remedy for diarrhea. And then they said, oh, it only works for some people. So how could it work? Well, that's the old model. You give one size fits all and um, it doesn't um, it doesn't work for everyone. Go figure. <laughs> it's like, we could have told them that. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. time to There's look at this again. <laughs> a lot of researchers trying to disprove homeopathy and you can do it easily. You can, e you can easily disprove homeopathy. And yet there is plenty of research that prove it and proves an effect. In yeah. fact, much of the foundation of my course is based upon a Swiss, a Swiss research into ADHD. Mm. And this research proved that homeopathy was more effective than any other possible treatment. And then in fact, three out of four patients would improve with long-term homeopathic care. And um, that's a 70 to 75% success rate. That's unheard of in medicine, mm. unheard of. Yeah. And that was individualizing the mm -hmm. patients, which you think about ADHD is just, I mean, it looks, they all look the same as someone with ADHD, but they're not. They're each one unique exactly. and needing a specific yeah. treatment. Yeah. And so, you know, in homeopathy, we now have 5,000 plus remedies. Mm. Unwieldy. Any <laughs> pharmacist trying to juggle 5,000 drugs would mm. just pull their hair out. Mm. Same for homeopaths. And so in my learning how to be a better homeopath, I went backwards in time to a time when there were just hundreds of remedies. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really what I'm teaching. I'm not just disavowing all the new medicines i'm sure they're great but in terms of need there's plenty of remedies and uh, learning about how to differentiate them is better in small numbers mm. and the old homeopaths did it very very well and we now have tools that can amplify their knowledge mm -hmm. and uh, make it exceptionally easy for anyone to prescribe successfully from the mother who's deciding between aconite or belladonna or nux vomica, it's no longer a complicated choice. Mm -hmm. it can be simple. So we are going to put an end to this one today, but what yeah. just before we do that, and I'll put the link to, you know, to your, um, to your training um, afterwards, but what is the, the distinction? And we're going to get into it next time that um, what is it that the methodology that is different 
So the methodology is using uh, what are called characteristic symptoms as opposed to particular symptoms. And that was a way of generalizing the symptoms in terms of the homeopathic language of the symptom mm -hmm. picture and using those and makes life much simpler. Mm -hmm. Further, we can utilize what are called polar symptoms where the same symptom um, can be expressed in the same remedy twice. So for instance, a remedy could be thirstless, not wanting to drink and be in the symptom for that, but it can also be thirsty. And it's the difference between the two grades uh, that we'll have to explain another time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yields a mathematical certainty for the choice of medicine. But so your course, because I am I'm gonna give you the last word, but just to to so that people look out for the uh, part two is could be for the complete beginner but it also can be useful to people who have been exposed to like through naturopathic school or whatever to homeopathy a, an understanding of it you know maybe 70 hours 100 hours but they don't they don't have a method that has as reliable results without putting in as you said that many years and i know i put in <laughs> i put in that many years most of my cases were like it took me you know 10 to 11 hours to work on one single case you know mm -hmm. um so it's it's a arduous way uh, but it is open then to to people with different levels of knowledge right of homeopathy absolutely it's open to everyone because right. everyone can use homeopathy and um, the methodology is that simple that a, a mom could prescribe for their child, a mm -hmm. practitioner could prescribe for their um, neurologically de demanding patient mm -hmm. uh, very quickly using the same information they're already taking. Mm -hmm. um, it's a remarkable process. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. With that, I'll just say thanks very much. And uh, I've enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to um, part two. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us at the Healers Cafe with Manau Belize. Continue your healing journey by visiting thehealerscafe.com and her website and discover how to listen to your body and reboot for optimal health.